beauty of Ithaca and the surrounding area, especially Cornell, is something that uh, overwhelmed me the first time I was here. Uh, I'll tell you a little story. I was coming to work. I looked off, and it was like a picture postcard. Not only did I enjoy it then, but I went straight to my office to call my wife and say, "Hun, you've got to hurry up and come to Ithaca because it is the most beautiful place I've ever been. Situated in New York State's Finger Lakes region, Ithaca, New York, home of Cornell University, is like taking a trip into Thornton Wilder's novel, Our Town. The small town atmosphere with big city attractions make Cornell's home picture perfect. Founded in 1865, Cornell is one of the great universities in the world links with past academic accomplishments in its diverse curriculum are mirrored in the architecture on its beautiful grounds. Our founder, Ezra Cornell, purchased this land, established a farm here, and then gave the farm to the university. And there are now 400 buildings on the farm that was once his. Uh, he insisted it should be built up here on the top of the hill and not down in the valley because he realized that ultimately there'd be thousands of students studying here. We have men and women from all over the world, and that gives it a very remarkable flavor. The diversity contrived of faculty and students could well be the single most advantage of an education at Cornell. My impression of Cornell was uh, Coke bottle bottom glasses, students walking around, and I got here and my roommate was just off the wall. He, he wasn't anything like the typical Cornell student, you know, that I had in mind. I have never really encountered someone that if you stopped and asked them a question, you know, they wouldn't really be willing to help. There's so many people that even if you don't know somebody by name, um, you've seen them around enough that they'll say hi, and eventually the hi will lead to a how you doing, and pretty soon you'll just be having a conversation with someone. The friendships and fun are contagious, and alone are reason enough to come to Ithaca. Remember, lead your person, depending on how hard you throw them. Cornell students are pursuant of academic excellence in everything from that perfect toss in Frisbee 1A to the more traditional subjects. The problems of the American society are the product of unregulated uses of economic power. It makes no sense to counter... But Cornell's stature comes not from lectures, but rises out of the students' academic freedoms to dedicate oneself to explore, create, and mature in an uncomparable environment. One well, of the main reasons I'm at Cornell University is to coach a young man who's dedicated to excellence, and this is through academics because to get in school, you have to qualify. In other words, if he doesn't qualify to get in school, he won't be here playing football. And then he's dedicated himself to playing football because he loves the game. This is what we want. We want young men that love to play football, that are playing for the fun, and I want them to have fun probably more than anything. Cornell players are enjoying the game and getting more out of it. The desire and hustle make for a special something found in the big red stripes. There's a feeling among the players that Cornell can't be stopped. Whether it be on the ground or through the air, the offense will get the job done. One player typical of this mood is Derek Harmon, a two-time academic All-American and Bushnell Award winner. Number 31 led the Ivy League in rushing with 1,276 yards. 
and ended his career as Cornell's second all-time rusher. But Derek's eyes were not just on football when he came to Cornell. Engineering here at Cornell uh, offers me a lot of uh, experience in, in labs, have a lot of facilities that pertain to engineering, uh, exposure to renowned professors, and those are the things I looked at when considering Cornell. Preparing for the future academically, are eyeing the world of professional football. Cornell has solid role models for student athletes to emulate. The familiar gait belongs to the most prolific runner in Ivy League history, Ed Marinaro, alias Officer Joe Coffey of Hill Street Blues fame, and a former Minnesota Viking. Marinaro played with a desire and spirit that yielded him all the big red rushing and scoring records in both career and single season categories, plus 11 Ivy League marks. Known for his versatility, Marinaro was tough to defense and a constant threat to hit pay dirt. To stop the opponent's main threat, is the mark of a solid defense. The rallying cry for Cornell's defense is reckless. Players respond with big plays, hard hits, and a lethal dose of poison to Ivy opponents. needed away from football and studies to relax or to feed a hearty appetite. Any of the university eateries offer good food and friendly chat. Once a week, a group meal adds that special Cornell feeling to all football team members. Cornell athletes enjoy the finest facilities, and athletic director Lang Kennedy has his own thoughts about Cornell football. Old is good. <laughs> And when you take a look at our facilities and you take a look at the plans that we have to renovate our facilities and to bring them up to standards that we want to have with a first-class uh, athletic program, you will recognize the facade of our buildings. But once you go inside them and you take a look at our plans, you're going to see a modern, up-to-date physical plant that it will be par excellence that we can compare with any institution in the country. Cornell's weight training equipment already is one of the best in the East. The training room is staffed by genuinely concerned individuals, not only for rehabilitation, but to try and prevent injuries from occurring. When a Cornell player walks onto the field, he's had the finest care possible. Red football is 68-year-old Sholkoff Field, which stirs every fall with tradition. Scholarship first, and you enjoy the sport for the sport of it. This is, was true back in the days when I was going to school, which was way back in 1937-42. Tailgate parties, ready students and alumni for kickoff, while players search for that special motivation. Thank you. 
touchdown on the first play offensively. Defense will be three plays and out. That's where we want to start the ball game. We talked all year about having fun, that meant now's our chance to start. From the day on, we're in the Ivy League. This is our season. Let's have a good one. Cornell football Saturdays are special. The excitement on the team engulfs the crowd. They go snap the ball. Maxie Vaughn watches with the big red supporters as his defense goes about their task. And shines, and even though well executed, more polish is applied by coaches. Here's what's happening with the burns. Here's the weak side. I'm there. Okay, so you got a man for man. You got a man for man. All right. So Willie, you're gone. Okay. Mike linebacker, you got a tough job to cover him, man. Yeah, yeah, Mike linebacker. That's on a one, one on a burn. That's a tough job. That's a tough job, but you can do it. We got a first down. Come on, Jack. Driving for the first strike, Coach Bond checks just what is needed for a field goal. of adjustment to make, the crowd gets into the action. <laughs> Protecting the 3-0 lead for the new coach's first victory unites everyone. Nobody should be satisfied with a tie. Nobody should be despondent with a tie. We played better football. We know what. We can play a lot better, don't we? And we played one of the top teams in the Ivy League today. We played them to a standstill. So there are a lot of positive things in the football game. Let's take those and build on them, and we get to go and play Brown next week. Let's have a good week of practice. We know how to play. We had a great week of practice last week. We've got to practice like that every week. Everybody dedicate yourself to doing that and make sure that you take care of your job first, not only in practice, but when we get in the ball game, we make sure that we do it there. Okay? See you tomorrow afternoon at 4.30. We all have an understanding of why we're here. We're here to, to have a good time. But uh, having a good time in football means winning, and that involves sacrifice, and it involves uh, unity and a lot of teamwork. I think uh, Coach Bonds brought that feeling to the program. It's something that wasn't exactly lacking in the last few years, but maybe it wasn't emphasized as much as other things. The coaches team a lot more interested in the players. We have somewhat more relaxed practices. Yeah, we still get a lot of things accomplished. 
And um, while we haven't won a lot of games to this point, I think the attitude and general morale of the team is very good. I wanted to go somewhere where I played football at a major college level and where I enjoyed it. You know, I had no obligation other than me wanting to be out there and doing it. And I think that shows on the field and the attitudes of the players because there's really the only reason they're out there is because they like the game of football and they want to be out there. I think my number one philosophy is to have fun. In order to have fun, you have to do a few things. Number one is you have to work hard. And keep the chain over here, all right? Over here, give a backer call, all right? Man it, man it. Number two is you have to win. And this is all part of having fun. And once you win, it is fun. If there's time to, uh, on the field to laugh, we laugh. If there's a uh, serious moment on the field, we don't laugh. We make sure that we stay serious. And this is important, I think, not only for the coach, but for the player also. That's right. Here we go. Here we go. Jump up and down a few times. Named All-Pro four times, nine Pro Bowl appearances, defensive coordinator at Baltimore and Detroit, Maxie Bourne was named as Bob Blackman's successor of Cornell football fortunes. Coach Bourne's real strength is found as a communicator, understanding the difficulties student athletes encounter. Block that on you, so we can go ahead and run the set. See? Okay, let him stay up on the line when we're running this blitz. Okay, it's a, it's a lot better. It's a lot better if you're here and come around than if you're back there because if you're back there, they're going to look for you. Always a winner, Bourne expects the Big Red's hard work, character, and enthusiasm to pay off. Cornell finished Coach Bourne's first year with three straight wins. A crushing defeat of Yale in a game totally dominated by the Big Red. The offense struck for a season high. 41 points. A 31 to 6 victory over Columbia and the season final miracle on the road at Princeton. Down 30 to 6, Cornell showed that a foundation is being laid for a winning tradition. They rallied for 19 points to pull within a touchdown of victory with less than 7 minutes remaining in the game. Sean McGuire found Jim Perillo in the end zone for the clincher. Cornell supporters had not only witnessed one of the great comebacks, but knew the good times were just beginning. Cornell football is, is I think, on the upswing. Uh, we're building a program here that I know that will work because I am part of it. Our coaching staff is part of it. The university is part of it. The alumni are part of it. And with our secondary school system help, and the young men that we recruit, I know that our program will be a good one and one that each one of us will be proud of.